and about how WD-40 is all you need to lubr- lubricate your gun even. Oh, you gotta get them that hot door and spit on that thing. You get me? <laughs> Buds! We've all encountered them at the range, in online forums, and at the local gun shops. Now, these are the trolls of the firearms world that spread information, or misinformation, rather. Uh, things like bad habits as well, like uh, some kind of contagious disease. But fear not, dear viewer, today we're embarking on the safari to explore the various species of FUDs, complete with the identifying markers that would tell you what kind of FUD they are. So grab your binoculars, and let's dive in. Bet you thought I was going to say, let's start the show. Meet the Gear Fud. This subspecies is obsessed with the latest and greatest gadgets, often at the expense of things like, I don't know, actual shooting skills, maybe? This guy's range bag has everything. I mean, it looks like it could launch a freaking space shuttle. A key identifying trait of the Gear Fud is they're going to spend hours researching the perfect trigger, then upgrade, but won't be able to hit a barn door from 10 feet. They're going to say something like, I need a $1,500 scope and a laser to shoot properly. Uh, no, buddy, you don't. You, my friend, need to practice. <laughs> that piece of advice goes through the gear fud soft thinky bits faster than a buttered bullet. Because, as we so often see, the gear fud still shoots like a before character in a late night infomercial. Have you spent thousands of dollars on useless gear, gadgets, and accessories, all with no luck? That hit my toe. Are you still shooting like a stormtrooper with cataracts? Then you should try sucking less from Blammo, the same company that brought you range time, dry fire practice, and getting good. Our patented suck less training system is assembled in China, where tiny children's hands make precise work, just like your precious iPhones and Nikes, folks. We pocket the savings and then charge you more than a set of truck tires. Gear FUD, it's time to face the music, pal. Your fancy gizmos are not gonna save you. Yeah, skip the overpriced crap and try something a little bit more revolutionary, like, I don't know, maybe practice or eating a vegetable. Maybe once you get over being vitamin deficient, then you'll actually hit something smaller than your oversized ego. Hey, if you like to hit small targets from far away, make sure to check out our sponsor, CMMG. Introducing the newest caliber offered in the CMMG lineup. 22 ARC, or Advanced Rifle Cartridge, is Hornady's hot new cartridge designed to get 22 250 performance from an AR-15. With multiple loadings available, the 22 ARC is a perfect match for CMMG. We are offering the 22 ARC in three of our popular models, including the Descent, which is the compact action and bufferless operating system, the Trident 2 Resolute, offering the traditional AR feel and carbine size that you're used to, then we have the Endeavor, for when you want those longer barrel lengths to push the cartridge out for those distance shots. All of these new 22 ARC offerings will come nicely equipped on their respective platform with our full line of zeroed accessories and our incredible zero drop-in trigger. Be sure to go to cmmginsider.com to sign up for our newsletter to keep you informed of future releases, which may even include a new platform for the 22 ARC and others. Get your 22 arc now at participating dealers. Our next FUD can be identified by his super unique war cry. I've been doing it this way for 40 years. You're going to likely spot him one handing his pistol like he's about to, I don't know, duel Andrew Jackson over the fate of the second national bank at dawn. This FUD is the epitome of a boomer shooter. He bought a house, I think. Yeah, that's usually what people live in back in 53 for the price of a freaking Happy Meal, leaving him with enough dough to amass a small arsenal of 1911s. Now, of course, it's 45 ACP only. I mean, ha, 9 mil metric system? That's going to be commie talk to this guy. I mean, he's so old school. His favorite tactical vest is the one that he got for free when he voted for Wayne LaPierre for president of the NRA back in 91. He wouldn't touch a modern polymer pistol because according to him, if it ain't steel, it ain't real. Ever since his grandkids showed him how to watch YouTube on his Motorola Razor, he's been watching nothing fancy and bootleg downloads of this old house. And he likes him so much that he's decided to get on the internet by signing up for America Online. You can email him at twoworldwars123 at aol.com. Actually, you know what? I've got a question for you guys out there in viewer land. What's the most bizarre FUD experience or like unsolicited FUD advice that you've ever gotten? Share it in the comments down below. And if it's really good, well, we might just borrow it for a video. We've all met this FUD before, trolling around the gun shop and he's floating around looking to find an excuse to start a conversation. And he starts off by saying, yeah, my buddy Steve was a Navy SEAL. Let me stop you right there, pal. I don't believe you. 
No, your buddy Steve was probably not a Navy SEAL. In fact, the only SEAL you know is at this moment plotting his escape from SeaWorld. Also on my tablet, by the way, and in the script, SeaWorld is spelled S-E-E -E World. I find that moderately funny, writers. We spell phonetically because you can't read. Ah, uh, fair point. This guy's the evolution of the I almost enlisted jump. Zero skills, zero training, and he's just clinging onto the name of an elite unit, kind of like a barnacle on a sinking ship, hoping that some of that badassery will just rub off onto his sad little brand of FUD lore. Let me guess, this same, uh, what's his name, Steve, was it? He taught you also that uh, secret Navy SEAL technique of holding your breath for three days and taking out bad guys with the tactical popsicle stick, right? Or maybe he showed you the classified underwater knife fighting moves. He talks such a good game about training, just like a SEAL, but his tactical reloads have all the smoothness and dexterity of Michael J. Fox holding your spouse's Catherine the Great brand 12-inch personal neck massager. Good for her. So the next time you hear that tired line of my buddy Steve is a Navy SEAL, just smile and nod. Remember, Steve's probably about as real as unicorns farting rainbows. They can either believe it or they cannot believe it. That that back there is not real. All right, everybody, gather around and prepare yourselves for the next float in the laughing stock parade, the Facebook FUD. Now, this guy is the ultimate meme to gun translator, turning every conspiracy theory into some kind of tactical strategy. Here's a guy who basically is a human Wikipedia page written exclusively by trolls with about as much real gun knowledge as Nancy Pelosi. He's out there posting pictures of his precision shots, which look a lot like a toddler with ADHD, was given a paintball gun the day release from kindergarten and decided to impersonate Jackson Pollock. If you don't know who that is, make sure to look that up. Kind of important. He's a painter. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I feel like most of us should know who Jackson Pollock is, but it's not like one of those. You were probably taught that in school unless you went to like, you know, you lived in, um, I don't know, Omaha. Do they have school in Omaha? Facebook FUD captions them with tight groups, baby. All thanks to those gunfighting techniques I learned on the gram. This FUD thinks he's the real life master of the range. His tactical drills look about as well coordinated as a third grade Christmas pageant. And most of the time you can just catch him doing some like John Wick interpretive dance thing that only badgers and startled deer could actually appreciate. His trigger discipline is so bad by the way that Alec Baldwin is considering him for a starring role in his next movie. With a gun collection that can only be described as having gone terribly, terribly, terribly wrong, He's got everything from the sniper rifle that's more accurate at long distances if you just throw it there to the combat pistol that's so ugly even a mother couldn't love it. His collection could be mistaken for the rejects pile at an Oakland PD gun buyback. I mean, seriously, if you could listen closely enough to some of these garbage pale firearms that are whispering, what's that, buddy? What's that? Kill me! Kill me! Kill you? Next time you see this walking gun safety nightmare sharing his wisdom on Facebook, do the world a favor and just don a hazmat suit and scroll on past, why don't you? Meet the Wild West wannabe FUD, folks. This guy strolls onto the range looking like he's ready to do some high noon showdown in full costume. He's got the Stetson hat, the cowboy boots, and a six shooter strapped onto his hip. He's convinced that firearms peaked with the Colt single action army and that nobody needs an AR when you can get a trusty Marlin lever action. When he's not reminiscing about the days when men were men and bullets were about as slow as molasses in January, this FUD is determined to live the authentic Western lifestyle, meaning that he'll answer every question with lines from Tombstone or the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm your Huckleberry. Uh, that's great, sir, but this is an Arby's. Can I take your order? His determination to keep it real means you'll smell him before you see him, because he gives off an odor that's somewhat akin to the ghost of John Wayne after a month-long bourbon bender. His personal aroma of B.O., ball sack, and leather conditioner all could peel paint, and if bottled, the scent would probably have to be named Died of Dysentery. The FUD's favorite phrase is, they don't make them like they used to, usually said while squinting off into the distance, presumably at some tumbleweeds he can only see. And he's right, of course. They don't really make them like they used to anymore. In almost every appreciable way, they make them way better. Yeah, you don't try to tell him that, though. His idea of tactical training involves spinning his revolver on his finger, practicing his draw in front of a mirror, 
and literally shooting from the hip. With a physique that screams more golden corral than okay corral, he's gonna tell you with a straight face that things would have gone differently if he was a sheriff in the Old West. And honestly, I think that might be true. I mean, you could imagine the pictures in the history books. Some 400 pound, unmissable, unkillable law enforcing gorilla out on the prowl for criminals, whammons, and most importantly, the best biscuits and gravy in the whole dang town. Taste the biscuit, taste the goodness of the biscuit. Ah, the competition FUD. This guy thinks his local three-gun match experience makes him a tactical deity of sorts. He'll brag about his world-class shooting skills, even though he's got more participation trophies than an entire class of kindergartners at the Gavin Newsom Elementary School and Re-Education Center. His idea of prepping for range day involves color coordinating his jersey and sponsor patches rather than, I don't know, actually practicing. Watching him shoot is kind of like watching a drunken ballet dancer. A whole lot of movement, just very little grace. He's the guy who insists on giving unsolicited advice, despite having all the smoothness of my teenage self trying to unhook a bra for the first time. Oh, and let's not forget his endless stories of the glory days. That probably just never happened. It never happened. He'll swear that he was almost on the local SWAT team, but had to settle for USPSA domination. Under the pressure of competition, he's about as calm as a chihuahua that's gotten to its owner's Adderall supply. His gear, it's pristine. His movements are theatrical, but his results? Well, let's just say he couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat. Next time he tries to impress you with his elite skill set, just make sure to smile and nod once again and enjoy the show. My dude missing a lot. <laughs> My dude, you fucking suck. Meet the gun shop know-it-all FUD, the self-appointed guru of the gun counter. Now he's the kind of guy who turns a simple question into a full on Ted talk. He lurks around the counter waiting to pounce on an unsuspecting customer. And he sits there taking up the staff's time, wondering if they've got any 41 Magnum in stock. What are you trying to buy a Glock? <laughs> well, you better prepare for a lecture on the superiority of all things revolver. Walk in asking some simple question about a cleaning kit and you'll leave with a lecture on the ballistic coefficient of every single cartridge known to mankind and about how WD-40 is all you need to lubr lubricate your gun even. Oh, you gotta get them that hot door and spit on that thing. You get me? <laughs> this guy's knowledge is kind of like his handlebar mustache. Outdated, questionable, and honestly, probably more of a cry for help than anything. He's gonna insist that the AR-15 isn't a real rifle, all while singing the praises of a Woodstock Ruger Mini-14. His advice is free, and it's priced appropriately. Especially when he starts quoting gun magazines from the 1980s as if they're gospel. The hot air this guy generates could power a wind farm, folks, and let's not forget his disdain for anything even remotely modern. Mention a polymer frame pistol and watch him recoil in horror, clutching his antique Colt, precious little Colt, like a crucifix against your evil polymer ways. Oh my God. Ah! Curse thee, you plastic shell demon. So the next time you're at the gun shop and you see this know-it-all FUD eyeballing you ready to pounce, do yourself a favor. Smile, nod once again, and back away slowly. Before you know it, he'll have trapped another unsuspecting customer in his web. Excellent. Ah, the internet forum expert FUD. This guy's got more posts than actual trigger pulls in his entire life. He's the digital warrior who spends his entire day behind a keyboard fiercely debating the superiority of outdated cartridges and black powder rifles. His magnum opus? It's a 10,000 word post detailing why 10 millimeter is for real men filled with jargon so thick that it by itself could in fact stop a 10 millimeter. Inconceivable. He's a rare sight at the range, emerging from his basement only when the Wi-Fi is down or his wife kicks him out of the house for her bi-weekly yoga sessions with her trainer, Darren. You'll recognize him instantly because he's the guy that's awkwardly fumbling with his firearm on the uh, firing line while regurgitating the latest wisdom from tactical operator 420 out on the forums. His shooting stance looks somewhere between like a mix of like a yoga pose and somebody trying to like avoid a slow but deliberate and stupid wasp. I don't know. Something like that he looks like. When he finally takes a shot, it's clear that his aim is about as useful as his forum advice. I'm imagining Cushion right now going through this video and, and looking at me trying to like act out this like yoga pose 
and I'm not a flexible human being. He is significantly less flexible than me, unless he's like some of one of like, like those weird fat guys who's like absurdly flexible, which is entirely possible. He lives in Florida. It's hot down there. His muscles might be bendy. I'm not sure that's how it works, but still, I'm imagining him watching this and just being like, dude, I can't believe. Like, how did my life lead me to this moment? And I'm sure he says that often as he'll talk over some part of this bit right here. I am more flexible and I do it so I can shoot machine guns at machine gun shoots for free. Well, there you go, folks. That's Uncle Cushion and his take on the subject. Let's get back to the script, shall we? Next time you see this walking misinformed wiki page on the range, just remember, they're the reason why we've all got to go to safety briefs. Hey, drop your funniest fun related stories in the comments down below and don't forget to subscribe, folks. See you next time. I got some fucking bloopers. I mean, 12 inches, the, uh, that is just something I do. I'm a professional, folks. I do this for a living. Don't worry. You're in good hands. You're in an elite club if you can comfortably allow yourself a foot long corn dog. But do you get like an award? That'd be funny. Is if like that was like a real thing, like you could you could make like if Google Glass ever took over, right? And you'd have achievements, like if you're wearing your Google Glass and you're just some like random weird porn star just getting absolutely smashed, and you're just gaining achievements and it's popping up like achievement unlocked, double penetration. <laughs> so next time you're at the gun shop and you see this fucking douchebag, kick him in the dick and make everybody else happy. Isn't it ironic? Don't you think? It's like, I don't know, Springfield making a good gun. That'd be ironic, actually. <laughs>